So hello everyone. Uh, today we'll continue with contact lens materials uh, terminology and classification. So we were discussing about classification till the last session. Uh, so according to the duration, we can classify the lenses into according to wearing schedule. We can classify it into daily wear, extended wear, uh, then uh, continuous wear. Okay. Uh, so daily wear in sense, contact lens designed to be worn for one day and removed before sleeping is known as daily wear. So uh, for, a, for a specific period of time at a, on, on a particular day uh, is basically known as daily wear. Uh, the patient uh, woke up, uh, he wears his contact lens around by 8 o'clock in the uh, morning and he will be removing the same lens by 8 o'clock in, in the night. So, one day a specific duration of the lens is used in Extended wear will be, uh, the person will be wearing lenses for about 6 continuous night without even removing. So, 24 hours into 6 nights. That is, 6 nights without removing the lens. Patient will be using continuous wear and extended wear. So, extended wear is the DK. Uh, of the material will be always higher than that of the daily wear. Then the next categorization will be continuous wear. So, for continuous wear in the Varanyandana, extended wear up to 6 nights, are, no? continuous wear will be up to 30 consecutive nights. Are, no? So, without even removing the lens. So, patient or lens put to you, he will be using the same lens for 30 days without removing the same. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in extended wear and continuous wear are high oxygen permeable materials then complications of extended wear will be giant papillary conjunctivitis complications of daily wear will be corneal infection ulcers and neovascularization so according to replacement schedule we do classify it as single use lenses one day lenses or daily disposable lenses so the advantages of uh, single use lenses will be or uh, daily disposable lenses will be it will be thinner lighter and it will it will provide greater comfort uh, discarded after one use considered for uh, for children's other disposable contact lens designs are every two to four weeks or uh, bi-weekly or uh, monthly bi-weekly monthly then quarterly or uh, conventional lenses are the the other classifications according to replacement schedule so we'll be having daily disposable then uh, bi-weekly disposable or monthly disposable then uh, quarterly disposable which will be like three months uh, then the next one will be annually annual lenses or uh, we do call that as conventional lenses so annual lenses in sense uh, in the annual lenses in sense 365 days the patient will be able to use the same lens once the packet is been opened so by weekly two weeks once the packet is been opened the patient will be able to use the lens for two weeks uh, then quarterly instance three months on a p in the other number number of usage allowed to consider jena once the packet is been opened it there was a manual on a number mentioned jena then uh, according to the corneal coverage we can classify the lens into corneous corneal lenses semi corneal lenses or soft contact lenses and uh, scleral contact lenses so corneal lenses will be the whole lens will be resting on the patient's cornea uh, so that those are RGP lenses. Semi corneal lenses are uh, uh, is is also classified as or or uh, is also mentioned as uh, soft contact lenses, which will be covering the cornea as well as the scleral area. Then the next category will be scleral contact lenses. Scleral contact contact lenses, in sense, it will be quite larger than the diameter of the cornea. It will be covering the whole patient's cornea as well as conjunctiva. So, according to lens materials, uh, used as uh, a, base, uh, a base of soft lenses, hydrogel refers to 3D polymer network that can uh, impipe large quantities of water without dis, uh, dissolution. There are two types, conventional hydrogel material and silicon hydrogel material. So basically hydrogel material it's, it's actually it does got a capability to hold large amount of water without uh, destroying the whole material apart. So basically it is classified into two categories conventional hydrogel material and silicon hydrogel material. 
Then the next material will be conventional hydrogel material uh, which is made from FEMA. FEMA is made by polymerizing two HEMA monomer with a cross-linking uh, link such as ethyl glycerol di dimacrylate uh, EGDMA. HEMA is hydrophilic due to the presence of hydroxyl group at the end of the monomer resulting in the bonding with water molecule. Contact lens made from HEMA contain about 40% water in the fully hydrated state. So, basically, conventional it's, it's actually a monomer. Uh, commonly, we use HEMA, FEMA for it. So, FEMA in the way, are two HEMA molecules are in the way, uh, ethylene glycol dimethacrylate in the way, uh, monomer white. We cross polymerize it, manufacture it in FEMA. So, FEMA does go to hydroxyl group or hydroxyl group it can hold up to 40% of water when fully hydrated. The main difference between hydrogel and uh, conventional uh, hydrogel material and conventional hydrogels are like um, the conventional hydrogel lenses are a bit rigid or uh, the, the material does uh, got larger. Uh, the, the, the rigidity of the material or the structural, structural integrity of the material is comparatively higher so that the patient will be able to use it for a longer duration uh, a so-called uh, second generation material was the griffin bionate natural lens a copolymer of fema and uh, polyvinyl uh, pyrrolidin or pvp uh, was added with fema so the total uh, instead of 40 percentage water uh, if we add pvp along with it then it will become 55 percentage of water content a direct sorry a uh, direct descended with silicon a is still in use other variants followed most uh, were combination of two polymer two or three polymer polymer of following polymers like uh, it will be like a combination of FEMA plus different other monomers like uh, PVP, methacrylic acid, MMA, GMA, DAA, PVA and all. So FEMA plus PVP, PVP plus MA plus MMA. Rendo mono monomers in the copolymerization which it is basically the newer generation materials manufactured. So silicon hydrogel material, silicon, cons uh, silicon uh, constituent permits very high oxygen permeability. Uh, hydroxyl component ensures that the lens are softer and comfortable also provide fluid transport through the lens. Uh, so uh, the invention of silicon hydrogel lenses are, uh, are basically to improvise the oxygen permeability to th uh, permeability through the lens. So what they did was like they incorporated uh, in into the hydrogel material they incorporated a silicon bond so by implo, impre, imp, uh, by adding a silicon covalent bond what they achieved was they achieved a higher oxygen transmissibility so the material is very, very high uh, dk material is available or the the category comes under very high dk uh, good dehydration characteristics easily easy handling good tensile strength low breaking rate rapid adaptation suitable for extended wear so uh, the 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 properties of uh, silicon were like it was comparatively rigider than hydrogel so the total material integrity become bit better uh, even if it dehydrates it it retains its own shape that's basically because of the silicon which is present in it then uh, Silicon is comparatively rigid as compared to a hydrogel material. So, uh, because of the presence of silicon, it made the lens easy to handle. Uh, the tensile strength also increased because of the rigidity of the silicon. Uh, it was comparatively rigid plus flexible. So, low breakage rate was there. Uh, it was very easy for the patient to get adapted if uh, the patient is using the silicon hydrogel lens for the first time. So, if the person was using hydrogel, then uh, for sure the patient will be complaining about some irritation because of the extra rigidity of the silicon present in silicon hydrogel. Suitable for extended wear because of its high DK range. So, FDA classification of silicon hydrogel, sorry, uh, of uh, sorry, FDA classification of the material 
according to water content as ion, ion, uh, ionicity. So there are four different groups, group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4. Group 1 will be low water content, non-ionic polymer. Group 2 will be high water content, non-ionic polymer. Group 3 will be low water content, ionic polymer. And group 4 will be high water content, ionic polymer. So according to ISO hydro, uh, hydrogel uh, group, so it's basically been classified as group 1, 2, 3 and 4, low water content non-ionic material which contains less than 50 percentage water, uh, which contain 1 percentage of less expressed as mole fraction of monomers that are ionic at a pH of 7.2. Group 2 will be medium and high water content. Uh, non ionic, the material will be non ionic. Materials which contain 50% or more and uh, which contain 1% of less of monomers that are ionic at pH 7.2. So, group 3 will be low water content ionic material which contain less than 50 percentage water and uh, which contain greater than 1 percentage of uh, monomer that are ionic at pH of 7.2. For uh, medium and high water content ionic material which contains 50 percentage water or more and uh, which contain greater than 1 percentage of monomers that are ionic at a pH of 7.2. Then uh, rigid lens materials. So, rigid lens materials, the first initial material was PMMA. Uh, it was not being classified as rigid gas permeable because uh, PMMA does not allow any oxygen to pass, pass through it. So, used in uh, contact lenses in late, late 90, uh, 1930s. Uh, typically, if we will say the date as uh, exact date as Flintrome in 1936, Mullen and Obring in 1938 readily machined, machined and polished, fairly wettable, when cleaned, easy to care for, rigid and uh, the water content of the material was about 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. Uh, almost zero oxygen permeability, uh, produces spectacle blur in long term, uh, in long term polymegathism or corneal exhaustion syndrome because of the lower or, uh, or, or because of the zero decay by T or the zero decay value of the material, uh, the cornea may go under, under um, hypoxic stress. So, which will end up in uh, spectacle blur as well as corneal exhaustion syndrome. Early attempt to re uh, replace PMMA where cellulose acetate butyrate or CAB, uh, we can call it as CAP. Introduced by Eastman, used in haptic shells uh, by uh, Tesla in 1937. Not used in RGP uh, corneal contact lenses until 1972. Slightly flexible, water resistant, can be molder, molded or laid. Well tolerated possibly because of hydroxyl group uh, resulted in 2% water content and uh, reasonably wettable. Material stability lower than PMMA, decay in range which is about 4 to 8 which was still low uh, but uh, at the initial stage of contact lenses for 4 to 8 was a good amount. Incompatible with uh, preservative like benzalkonium chloride. So if you will expose uh, CAB with uh, benzalkonium chloride there will be a discoloration of the monomer can be observed. Then uh, butyl stearine or T-butyl stearine the decay value was about 25. Uh, while low, uh, low was quite uh, competitive at the time of release because initially uh, the, the other materials which were available was uh, of uh, the DK was of with uh, lesser than 25. Uh, so this was a compatible material. The refractive index was like 1.533. Uh, is the highest of any RGP material. The specific gravity is 0 0.95 is the lowest of any RGP material. Combination of high and low uh, SG offers the thinnest specific gravity offers the thinnest lightest lens possible. This made the material ideal for high refractions. Materials was not particularly successful in the marketplace. 
then siloxane acrylate the original siloxane acrylate material was introduced in the late 1970s uh, which was a rigid material uh, sio si bond is uh, flexible and uh, extensible the results in uh, significant decrease in oxygen permeability but a reduction in the material rigidity so sio si bond add in the way what they achieved was like uh, they uh, they increase the oxygen permeability and siloxane acrylate and uh, all these things the backbone was pmma dk uh, in low to medium range are achieved uh, wetting agent may be incorporated to enhance lens wettability usually methacrylic acid uh, the main reason for adding methacrylic acid was silicon was a hydrophobic substance and along with that silicon does uh, the silos, uh, siloxane acrylate or uh, the sio bond will be having a negative charge at the periphery of the lens so uh, chances of higher deposits will be there then the advantages of siloxane silicon acrylate were uh, high decay than any previous material Regi reduced rigidity allow large lens diameter or large optic zone to be used the disadvantages are more deposit prone because of the surface charges surface easily scratched uh, because it's a softer sub uh, surface substance as, as compared to any other material higher breakage rate can crease flexure problems and uh, parameter instability were the disadvantages then the next uh, to increase uh, the, the process of uh, finding new new materials to increase the oxygen permeability included the invention of fluorosiloxane acrylate so they included fluorine molecule with siloxane acrylate uh, the element fluorine is added to basic sil siloxane acrylate yes, chemistry to enhance oxygen permeability a low surface charge uh, was the result some materials may wet a little better some materials may resist a deposit more and decay of uh, 40 to 100 or more are achievable because of the presence of fluorine as well as silicon uh, polymer monomers uh, decay are high enough for extended wear to be pos uh, extended wear to be a possibility fluorosiloxane acrylates are generally more flexible than siloxane acrylates surface are relatively easily scratched then uh, the next one was perfluoroether a perfluoroether consists of fluorine oxygen carbon and hydrogen the fluorofocon a material consists of perfluoroether pvp and mma so perfluoroether was uh, the next generation or uh, the next material uh, with with comparatively higher amount of decay because of the presence of fluorine oxygen carbon and hydrogen in it the advantages and disadvantages of perfluoroethers are advantages will be dk 90 plus a good extended wear potential uh, neutral surface charge great flexibility on eye then uh, the disadvantages were low refractive index high specific gravity uh, low yields or uh, cost of uh, production was higher with the perfluoroether material itself average wettability and greater flexibility on eye which will uh, reduce the correction of astigmatism so elastomeric lens material uh, the first one was silicon rubber organic inorganic polymers with a, with a backbone of silicon and oxygen uh, linkage high oxygen permeable surface made hydrophobic by chemical treatment or uh, cords drawbacks were coatings were thin and could rub off lipophilic uh, lipidophilic so lipophilic absorbs the lipid present in the tear film acrylic rubber made of polymers that have a carbon to carbon backbone acrylic rather than metacrylic polymers sorry monomers uh, finished lenses are also known as pa sorry pba pma purely uh, polybutyl acetyl cobutyl metacrylate lenses high oxygen permeability then again the lenses were hydrophobic in nature so as we all know like uh, if the material is hydrophobic in nature uh, similar to acrylic rubber as well as uh, silicon rubber the material the, it does got a surface charge as well as um, the surface is hydrophobic in nature because of the presence of uh, silicon monomer in it 
so because of the higher uh, sorry because of the hydrophobicity of the material the materials will be having a deposit the chances of deposits is is comparatively quite higher in in case of a silicon acryl uh, sorry acrylic rubber as well as silic uh, silicon rubber so we need to coat the surface with a hydrophobic coating so that uh, the chances of deposits will be very low then uh, we can easily classify the same thing into same materials into rigid lenses and soft lenses then non gas permeable and gas permeable lenses uh, so this el elastomeric uh, el elastometric lenses can be classified under soft as well as rigid lenses so non gas permeable uh, which is hard lens uh, the only one and only one material was uh, pmma then for rgp it was cap siloxin methacrylate fluorosiloxin methacrylate and uh, acrylic acrylic stearin then elastomeric lenses uh, which can be classified under soft as well as under rgp because it's it's basically literally a combination of both so uh, elastomeric lens material uh, elastomeric lenses uh, are silicon rubber and acrylic rubber so that's all about uh, the material uh, contact lens materials and its its, its properties and uh, and uh, different terminologies and we go through the presentation and uh, if you got any doubts please do let me know thank you all